Welcome to this presentation on writing the introduction chapter uh, for a thesis or a dissertation. Um, my name is Cecile Bardenhorst and I'm going to talk you through this in this video presentation. Um, so there are many ways of writing the introductory chapter but there are, there are often very common features and, and what you would need to do is have a look at dissertations in your field and maybe read a couple um, and to see what the chapters, how the chapters are written, particularly in your discipline. So what I'm going to take you through now is a kind of generic um, genre, but there might be specific things that you need to put into the introductory chapter, uh, which you, you'll be able to find out from either reading dissertations in your field or talking to people in your discipline. So this is generally what goes into uh, the introduction chapter. There's an introductory paragraph. You need to somewhere explain the background to the problem, then explain the problem, which would include what the purpose of the research is and the research questions. Then you would need a section on the research design and research context, on the conceptual framework, if that's something that's impor important for your uh, discipline or field, something on the significance of the research, and you would you could also include limitations scope and other sections like that. Um, in some disciplines you would be expected to put the expected outcomes into the introduction, but not all disciplines expect this. Um, then you would have an overview of the chapters to show the reader what's coming, and then a concluding par paragraph to this chapter. So the purpose of the introduction is to set the scene for the dissertation. This is the first chapter your reader will see, and it sets the tone. And often you write it last, because it is this kind of um, pulling things together. Um, and just to introduce you to uh, something that's fairly well known in the literature, uh, which is uh, Swales and Feek have come up with this um, thing called moves, which, which is way, rhetorical moves, ways of writing, um, in introduction. So they did research on what writers, what academic writers do when they introduce a paper. And these are the moves. The first move is that academic writers generally tend to establish a research territory. And um, they do this by showing that this research area is important um, or, or that there's there's been a problem uh, or there's something interesting here. So they begin by saying, this research area is significant because of, okay, and and then introducing and reviewing various bits of other research. Uh, the second move is establishing a niche, a niche, and this is where the academic writer would say, uh, this is where my thesis or paper fits, it's in this gap. Uh, of previous research. And what my thesis or paper will do is add to, uh, close that gap in some way, extend knowledge. And then the third move is to show how this paper will occupy that niche. And that's generally stating the purpose of this research. Um, yeah. So the three moves are just to go over them again. Establishing a research territory, establishing a niche, and then occupying that niche. So these are the moves that are overlaid over the, the genre. So somewhere in the introductory chapter, you want to be able to show that you have established the research area, you've created a kind of knowledge gap, and then you're showing how you're occupying that knowledge gap. So the first paragraph would... Um, like any introductory paragraph would pull your reader in with something interesting. It would state the purpose of this chapter and you might uh, present a roadmap of what would be discussed in the chapter. The next section would be the background to the problem. And this is where you might discuss the context, uh, whatever happened leading up to this problem and it really sets up the need for this research and the relevance for this research. And once you've discussed the background to the problem, it should lead into the problem purpose statement and questions. So basically it leads into the problem, the purpose statements, and, and included in the problem will be the knowledge gap. 
the conceptual framework, uh, if that's how you've developed your problem purpose statements. And if you're not sure how to develop your problem purpose statement, then please have a look at the video presentation on problem purpose statements. Um, and then questions. Uh, yeah, so the problem purpose statement should come within the first three pages of this introductory chapter. If, if it takes longer for you to get to the problem purpose statement, then you might want to introduce the problem go to the background and then come to the problem purpose statement. But somewhere within the first three pages, you need to tell your reader what this thesis is about. If you don't, they're going to get uh, a little bit irritable and unhappy with you. Uh, well, they'll be asking, why do I need to read this? What is this about? So you need to satisfy that reader's question right from the beginning. Right. Um, yeah, so once you've discussed the problem, the next step is to then discuss the research design and context. And this is where you give a description of where the research is going to take place. And then you give an overview of uh, the methodology. So you're not giving all the details, but you're providing the, the reader with an introduction to this. Um, if your conceptual framework is important, then you would include a section on it here too. And again, this is not where you discuss the details of it. It's where you introduce your reader to what frames this particular thesis. And then you might have sections like, uh, what is the significance of this research? What are the limitations, the scope? Um, I would definitely have a section on what is the significance of this research because you want to spell that out for your reader, why this is important. And your discipline or department may have other components that they want you to include in the introduction so you need to look out for those. Um, in the social sciences, humanities or in education you generally don't put the expected outcomes of your research in the introduction but I think in the sciences and perhaps engineering that's much more common so this is something that you would need to look up um, and see if that's if that would go into the introduction. Somewhere in the introduction you want to give an overview of the chapters to come. And this is really not just saying there will be an introduction, but, but you want to emphasize uh, the, the kind of main argument of your thesis. So, so you, you want to say, you know, the literature review will introduce X concept and explain why it's significant in this research. So the overview of the chapters, while it provides signposting for the reader, is also a way for you to show kind of coherence and how this whole thesis supports a particular argument. And then the last paragraph of the introduction summarizes the key points of this chapter, so the main points that you want to leave in the reader's mind, and then links to the next chapter. Um, so the introductory chapter, just to recap, is, is the first thing that your reader will see. So it's really an overview of um, what's, what's to come. But the most important thing is that it sets up the research problem and the need for this research. Um, the introductory chapter is, is normally not a long chapter. You know, I'm, I'm very reluctant to give page lengths, but uh, an arbitrary figure that comes to mind is, is maybe 20, 25 pages, depending on what you're doing. Uh, the, the more important thing is to look at the weighting in terms of the page numbers for this chapter compared to other chapters. And this is really uh, not, not a long chapter. It's, it's setting things up. It's explaining to the reader what's going to come throughout the thesis. Okay, thank you.